Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maker Mindset. This is the third and final video in the series about firmware update. We will finally generate the firmware file and then upload it to the printer. So let's get the ball rolling. It was a long time coming, but finally we're going to generate the firmware update file. The first thing that we need to do is to open VS Code. We're going to load the Marlin files that we have prepared on a previous video into VS Code. So then go to the menu and select File, open Folder. Now go to the C drive. Open the firmware folder and select the Marlin folder. Now VS Code is going to throw you a warning. You should click on the blue button that says Yes, I trust the authors, trust folder and enable all features. Now VS Code is going to show you a dialog box on the bottom right corner of the application. It's just asking if you want to install the AutoBuild Marlin extension. Just click on the Install button. The status is showing that VS Code is installing the extension. Now it's done. Now Platform IO is rebuilding some stuff on the background. So in the meantime, we can begin working on the Marlin files. And we will start by clicking on the Explorer icon at the very top on the left hand side. Now we need to open the platformio.ini file and we need to make a single change on it. We need to change the default environment variable. Here you need to pick up the notepad where you wrote information about your motherboard and look for the last four digits of the CPU model you wrote down. If you have a CPU with model number ending on RET6 or VET6, then you need to change your environment variable to STM32F103RE underscore quality. By the way, anything you type on VS Code will be case sensitive. Now, if the model number of your CPU ends on RCT6, you will have to change your default environment variable to STM32F103RC underscore reality. And now, if you want to avoid any misspelling, LOL Dalmatians. These variables are in the description. Now, here, the icon next to the name of the file has turned into a white circle, which means that the file needs to be saved. So let's do it. Now you can close this file. Now the next file that we need to edit is inside of the subfolder Marlin. It's called configuration.age. Now let me give you a quick explanation about comments on VS Code. The text on this file that has the green color will be completely ignored by the firmware compiler. It's only there for your benefit, with documentation about each variable that you can alter. So you only affect the firmware when you make changes to the colored parts of the file. We need to make a couple of changes on this file, but the file is pretty long, so we are going to use the find feature to locate the variables that we want to alter. So you need to go to edit, find, or you can just press Ctrl F. Now type driver underscore type. Now pick up your notepad with information about your motherboard and look for the information you wrote about your stepper motor driver. Remember when we were looking at our motherboard and we were trying to figure out what type of stepper motor driver we had? Well, if you found a letter on top of the micro SD card reader, then you will have to look at this table which has the letters and the stepper motor drivers that they represent. In my case, I had the HR4988, which is the clone of the A4988. 
so I don't have to change anything here. If you, however, have a different stepper motor driver, you will have to change it to the correct type in all four locations. Now we need to search for the word motherboard. We are not there yet, so click on this down arrow to go to the next occurrence of the word. Now get back the notepad and see what version of motherboard you wrote down. In my case, I have the version 4.2.2, so I just need to add 2.2. But if the version of your motherboard is 4.2.7, you will need to add 2.7 here. Now we need to search for the variable CR10 underscore stock display. This is the monochrome display found on the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro. In my case, that's what I have. Now pick up your notepad again and see what model number you wrote for your CPU. If this number ends with VET6, then you will have to change the SOC constant to VET6 underscore 12864 underscore LCD. Now, if you have the Creality Color display, then you first have to turn these four lines into comments. You can do that by adding double forward slashes in front of each line, or by using the shortcut Shift-Alt-A. After that, you will need to search for the Color Display constant by typing DWIN underscore Creality underscore LCD. This line will have to be uncommented by removing the two forward slashes that precede it. As I said, I have the old display, so I don't have to do this. For last, I'm going to suggest you to change the name of your printer into something more informative. So, you will need to search for custom underscore machine underscore name. We need to keep the name of our printer pretty short. I will explain why later. So, I'll remove all the spaces and dashes from the name and add three characters at the end. Now, pick up your notepad one last time. Remember the last four characters on the model number of your CPU? You will need to type the first two characters out of these four right here. And the last letter will represent the stepper motor drivers that I have. In my case, will be letter C. Now we are finally ready to start compiling our first firmware. For this, you will need to go to the bottom left corner of the window and click on the white check mark icon there. This will start the process of compiling the firmware. I sped this process a little bit. Done. The firmware compilation summary is telling me that I will use only 28% out of the available memory on my printer, and here it tells me the location on the firmware file on my computer. The file has a bin extension, which means that this is a binary file that only the computer understands. So now let's open File Explorer and go to the firmware folder on the root of the C drive. Now open the Marlin folder, and now look for the .pio folder. Now open the build folder. Now open the folder that has the same name as our environment variable. And there it is, our firmware file with the bin extension. Now we need to copy the firmware file into our microSD card. And now we can eject the card and we are finally ready to update the firmware on our printer. Now that we finally have everything ready, it's time to update the firmware on our 3D printer. But before doing anything, let's check what firmware version we currently have. To see the firmware version, we need to go to the main menu now select the About Printer option 
And here it is. The firmware that we have is Marlin version 1.0.1. .1. It's from April 2000. Now we can turn off the printer and do the update. For this we'll need the micro SD card with the firmware file. And as you know, if you have a 32-bit motherboard, you will have to put the micro SD card with the copper traces facing up. Now it's time to switch the printer on. And within a few seconds, the firmware update process will be done. We can already see that we have Marlin 2.1. On the bottom, we can see our customized printer name. And here I will take the opportunity to explain why I suggested that you guys should come up with a short name for your printer. In the past I have made the mistake of putting a longer name on my printer. And since it didn't fit on the display, the printer kept scrolling it to the left. And this kind of display doesn't do scrolling very well. Besides, the printer status kept competing with the longer name, so all in all, you would be better off with a shorter name for your printer. So now let's go to the main menu. Now let's go to the About Printer menu. And as you can see, we now have three options. We now have Printer Info, Board Info and Thermistors. On Printer Info, we can confirm that we have Marlin 2.1 from June 2022. And it also tells me that this printer has one extruder. Now we can go to the board info. And it now shows my motherboard, which is a Creality version 4.2.2. Finally, we can go to the option thermistors. Here we can clearly see that thermal runaway protection is enabled for our hot end. And here at the bottom it shows that it is also enabled for our print bed. Now pat yourself on the back. You have just acquired the skill of updating the firmware on your 3D printer. Now, one last thing. You should erase the firmware file from your micro SD card. Nothing really bad is gonna happen if you don't, but it's always nice to tidy things up. That's it for now. I have lots of plans for the next video. But I haven't decided which one to do yet. So go down to the comment section and tell me what you want me to do next. I love to read the feedbacks, your suggestions, and some of you made a couple of corrections that were very helpful. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through Patreon, and now you can buy me a coffee. Information is in the description. And don't forget to leave your likes. They are very important for the channel. And I want to ask you a favor. Please, 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 don't forget to subscribe. This channel cannot be monetized until it reaches 1,000 subscribers. Here is the registration button. If you want to watch the rest of this series, you can click on this link here on the top. And at the bottom, you have a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So, bye bye now.